Victoria has confirmed another case of someone evading hotel quarantine overnight, flying onto Melbourne. This is back in July. I'm just wondering if you were aware of that. Oh, look, uh, Peter, I'm not aware of the day-to-day -day operations, but what I will say is that New South Wales has really been doing the heavy lifting when it comes to the quarantine system. We are welcoming back uh, at least 3,000 Aussies every single week at any given time. We've got more than 5,200 people in our hotel quarantine system. And there's no doubt uh, human error uh, can play a part. It's not a foolproof system. We, I think we've managed it extremely well. We've welcomed back at least 100,000 Australians through the quarantine system. And unfortunately, other states either haven't been able to or are choosing not to do their fair share. 45% of everybody who comes through Sydney Airport lives in a different state outside of New South Wales. And I appreciate the concerns that other states might have. I appreciate uh, people might cast opinions on, on what that means. But for New South Wales, please know that we're doing the heavy lifting for the nation. Victoria's been out of action for months and we've been welcoming back people from Victoria through Sydney Airport. Uh, as I said, 45% of the thousands of people that come in every week are from other states. And we do that gladly, but it's not... Um, I can't even promise you there won't be more mistakes in the future. Mm. But what I can tell you is the volumes are enormous. I've always said it's a risk because we've seen what happened in Victoria when, unfortunately, someone from the quarantine system got the disease in the community and then it was spread. We saw the consequences of that. We've seen the consequences in South Australia when a similar issue happened. Now, I'm not suggesting our system uh, is better or worse, but what I am telling you is, you know, 100... A thousand people through it. Plus, uh, we have to be on our guard. We have to assume there's going to be mistakes. Uh, and I know our police and our health authorities working with the federal agencies at the airport do an outstanding job, honestly. I've, I've met with some of them. I've spoken to them. Um, they do an outstanding job. But it is a battle day in and day out. And I think all of us have to be aware of that. And when we're thinking about uh, caps and when we're thinking about travel in and out of Australia, we have to accept what a big job it is keeping everybody safe in that quarantine system. It, the, it... The New South Wales police, and I speak from recent experience, uh, have done a very good job. And there's only been a few hiccups. But what has been, what has been learned from these most recent hiccups? Well, I think what uh, has been learned is that police are always checking, um, checking their their operational procedures. But what's most important is to make sure that if somebody comes on doing the job that hasn't done it before, that they get the training, they know what's in place, they know what they need to do. And even when people are really good at what they do, uh, even when people do do the right thing all of the time, mistakes can still happen, honest mistakes can still happen, and we have to be aware of that. And you know what? I take my hat off to every man and woman who works in that risky environment with people who may have the disease. And uh, not everybody is cut for that type of activity, that kind of job. And I, every day in this state, I'm so grateful to people on the front line who are keeping the rest of us safe. And all of us have to accept mistakes happen, mistakes will be made but we are in a pandemic and my first response to everybody working in our quarantine system is to say thank you. Please keep going and we are get deeply tested. grateful for that. But having and get, Exactly. But having said that, when mistakes do happen, we have to be very open and that's what the approach we've taken in New South Wales. Whenever there's a case and we interview the person, uh, we actually advertise in real time and I normally find out just like everybody else, where the person's been, what venues we should be careful about, who's a close contact. And similarly, if there is an honest mistake made in the quarantine system and somebody, I'm not suggesting it's something that should or does happen frequently, it's very infrequent, but when it does happen, mm. we need to make sure everybody who was at risk is not, knows about it. Everybody who, gets, who needs to get tested uh, does get tested. But, Peter, I don't want to take away from the fact this is a big job every day. It stresses me out every single day. And I'm grateful for everybody who's involved in the system. Premier, just on another matter, the Prime Minister made reference to the New South Wales energy deal in a party room meeting yesterday and said he raised concerns from his backbench with you. What was said? Oh, look, the PM and I um, have a great relationship, a very strong relationship. We're very frank with each other uh, and we just speak to each other about issues that our colleagues might raise with us. Uh, and I expressed to him, um, as I've done publicly, that in New South Wales, our fir first and foremost priority is energy security. 
Our second priority is to keep household expenses down and make sure people are paying less for energy and also to make sure we have a good opportunity to introduce uh, uh, renewables at the right time. So I think we've got a really healthy balance in New South Wales. In fact, the Prime Minister and I signed a memorandum of understanding last year uh, at where the federal government said that if we increased our gas supply that we would, and did a few other things, that we would actually get some uh, incentives, some funding for critical energy infrastructure. And we've done that. We've approved a major gas project in inland New South Wales uh, and around Narrabri, which will boost our gas supply. Mm. We've upgraded the port at Port Kembla where we can Im import gas. So uh, I feel that uh, New South Wales is, has the right balance. Uh, we are leading the nation in terms of our energy policy. We've got good energy security. Our household bills are some of the lowest in the nation. And we're also open for investment as well because in the future we don't want New South Wales to miss out on opportunities that exist in other parts of the world. And I think that's a healthy balance. Now, and not everybody is going to agree with all of your policies all of the time. Our job, though, is to do what we think is best for our citizens, and um, and I'm really pleased that we've had those constructive conversations. Uh, are you worried that the energy deal with the, with the Feds could be torn up? No, I'm not concerned at all. In fact, uh, everything we've done in New South Wales is consistent with that energy deal, and that's what I'm incredibly proud of. Everything we've done is entirely consistent with the deal that I've signed with the Prime Minister, and we're delivering against that. Uh, the Feds asked us to make sure, as I said, that we have more gas supplied in New South Wales, and that's exactly what we're doing. We, we approved a major gas project. We're also looking at options to import gas as if we need to, given uh, the low cost involved at this stage. What we're doing is to make sure we have uh, the lowest bills in the nation when it comes to households. We know families are doing it tough, and uh, especially in hot summers and cold winters, people rely on energy more than ever. And we don't want anybody making difficult decisions because they can't afford their bills. Quite the opposite. In New South Wales, we have lots of rebates on top of what uh, other, uh, other, you know, the federal government offers. We have rebates for people who can't afford it. We have rebates for people in certain categories. We want to keep household bills as low as possible. And we also want to have great energy supply. Unlike other states, Victoria and South Australia in previous summers have done what's called load shedding when they actually take off New South, take out of the grid here in New South Wales. Touch wood, we've not had to do that because we've made sure that our policy settings are sound, that they're strong, and that's something that will continue into the future. OK. Uh, New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Peter. Pleasure.